All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another edition of Cruising with the Case Handler. Case Handler himself is not here, evidently he's cruising somewhere else. I know he's working. He's busy, busy with his clients. Once again, the show is all about personal injury and immigration. The Case Handler happens to be an attorney, a partner at the firm Pollock Pollock Isaac and the Seco. He's one of the top personal injury attorneys in the nation, but this side of the country, he is the top personal injury attorney. $130 million, love saying that. Cannot be wrong for the communities out there. Make sure when you get hurt in an accident, you choose PPID, that's Pollock Pollock Isaac and the Seco. No one else, not Crazy Eddie, but definitely Adam Handler, all right? Make sure you call him at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. The Caribbean community, you now have a full service law firm. And when I say full, I mean full. You get hurt in an accident, PPID. Immigration, PPID. We've got the general, one of the attorneys, okay, Alan E.K., who's ready to speak with everybody out there tuning into 93.5 WVIP FM. We've got Conrad Pollock, the managing partner, practicing attorney. He's ready to speak with you all. We've got Andrea Sher with those cool glasses. I can't keep, I, I can't stop commenting on those cool glasses. She's ready. She's one of the attorneys who's going to be answering your questions. So ladies and gentlemen, turn up your radio. Share what it is that you're watching. Today will be exclusively immigration. Sorry, Adam. Today will be exclusively immigration that we're going to be talking about. And of course, I am going to ask one of the attorneys to bring us up to speed as to what's going on with immigration. But right now, everyone that's watching, everyone that's listening, note this number, dial this number, let it ring 10, 15 seconds, store the number. You will need it for an excellent attorney, an exceptional attorney. And the number for that full service law firm called Paula Pollock, Isaac and Seco, referred to as PPID, is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Good morning, Alan. How are you feeling today? I'm good, thank you, and how are you? I am wonderful. I'm quite sure you have got a couple of updates for us. Good morning, Andrea. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Great. Good morning, Conrad. How are you doing today? I see you're in the office. I am. Good morning. I am here, and uh, you, you, you say that as if you're know, with a tone of surprise in your voice. <laughs> well, I uh, doesn't matter, you know, especially these days with the technological improvements we're all benefiting by. doesn't matter where I am. I'm always working, always. And Whether that's here, key. At home, wherever, I'm always working. I'm all, and I'm always watching. Always working and always watching. There you go. So people, make sure you lock in, of course, the phone number for the firm. Remember, 844-774-3529. So, Alan E.K., I'm going to give you five minutes to bring us up to speed with any immigration updates before we jump into questions. I don't know if Andrea has any updates for us or, um, also, but let's go with you, Alan, okay? You're the man, you're the general, you're the man with the links with all these uh, folks at the Department of Homeland Security, Immigration. You're the man who has made it happen for so many people, so talk to me. Okay, here's a new one. Um, Congress is about to process or introduce something called the DREAM Act of 2021. This is a bipartisan bill authored by Senator Dick Durbin, a Democrat of Illinois, and Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina. This new bill, Dream Act of 2021, will provide young people who came to the United States as children and grew up in the United States an opportunity to apply for lawful permanent residence status and eventually citizenship. So this is really, really good. It's brand new. And the fact that a Republican and a Democrat and, and prom prominent Republicans and Democrats are sponsoring this, Lindsey Graham, <clears throat> Republican, Dick Durbin, a Democrat, so really good news. So we'll keep an eye on this bipartisan call called the Dream Act of 2021. Okay, next. Um, we've been talking about all these different uh, actions that President Biden has been doing in just to clarify, because uh, in his first full week, President Biden issued 39 executive actions. What does that mean? Those are orders, memorandum, proclamations. Many of these overturned similar actions that pres his predecessor, the ex-president, I'm not gonna name him. So the question is, what's an executive action? 
Well, the best known executive action is an executive order, EO. But presidents can also issue a memorandum, direct administrative matters, proclamations, a lot of different things. But he's done at least 39 executive actions. Now, uh, interestingly, um, the new Biden administration has put about to put forth new rules for ICE, which will point to fewer arrests and fewer deportations and a more restrained ICE agency. So while these new ICE operation plans are not yet final, intimate interim instructions sent to senior officials in ICE point to a major shift in enforcement. A ICE agents will no longer seek to deport immigrants for crimes such as driving under the influence and assault, and will focus instead on national security threats recent border crosses and people completing prison and jail terms for aggravated felony convictions. So this is really good. And you know, uh, Alan, we excuse me, we you know, we've been talking about this now for since since the inauguration. You know, uh, the Obama administration way back when had created priorities for those people that deserve to be removed. And it's exactly what Biden is now re implementing. You know, after Obama left office and his successor took over with his anti-immigrant agenda. Uh, they changed everything and basically eliminated priorities and basically said that if you're here illegally, we're coming to get you uh, and that we're going to deport you. And of course, what that did, uh, besides just wasting resources, going after dishwashers and housekeepers, um, it, it created immense fear in immigrant neighborhoods. Uh, which we all are, are well aware of. And I'm sure a lot of the people out there listening know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, in fact, we have a client uh, ourselves uh, that we've been working on his release right now, who's about to be released today, who was picked up in one of the, in just one of those raids last year. Um, and we've been trying since then to get him out of jail uh, and we're finally succeeding. He's supposed to be released today, but that's another story. Uh, what the Biden, admi Biden administration is doing is returning to a, 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 a policy of sanity and, and, and uh, humanity uh, in, in dealing with the illegal immigrant population. Yes, if you are, if you are uh, an aggravated felon, if you've committed a serious crime, uh, if you crossed the border yesterday thinking that all of a sudden there's an open border where you're about to find that otherwise, uh, but, or, and also on national security issues, uh, those are people that should be removed. Uh, but if you've been here for 20 years and have been just paying your taxes and working and supporting your family, and uh, other than the illegal entry or the fact that you've been here illegally for whatever period of time, that's your only offense, you know, they're not going to come after you anymore. They're not going to terrorize you and your family and your neighborhood uh, trying to remove you, which is a good thing. Uh, hopefully these people will get some form of relief in the way of being able to get online to get the green cards um, and, and le legally stay here. But again, another story, but I'm sorry, I, I digress, Alan, it's all yours. No, so the interesting thing is that uh, John Sandwick, who was an act, former acting director of ICE during the Obama administration, said this thing, this preliminary guidance is a good step to improving ICE's public image and the quality of its work. No one judges the FBI by the number of arrests they make. They judge them by the quality of arrests. And so this gentleman said, measuring ICE's performance according to the number of arrests and deportations that Trump did is not a recipe for good law enforcement. It's a recipe for jacking up statistics with the low hanging fruit of the law enforcement system. So these narrower priorities will focus agents on getting dangerous people off the streets. So, this is really a good thing, these new ICE rules. One quote that I heard, just to take the other side of the uh, spectrum, uh, an, an ICE official was quoted as saying, they've abolished ICE without abolishing ICE. You know, because now these gung-ho ICE agents can't be, you know, knocking on people's doors at three o'clock in the morning, you know, and saying, surprise, surprise, you know, we have a gift for you. And they open the door and the, and the guy ends up being let out in handcuffs because he's been illegal in the United States for the last 30 years. You know, those days are over, you know. So a lot of these ICE agents are, are I guess, a little upset and distressed at the fact that they can't just go and upend people's lives anymore. It's unfortunate for them, huh? But now we're going to have fewer arrests and fewer deportations and a more restrained ICE. Now, in addition, uh, we know that... President Biden has 
put out an executive order which directs immediate review of the public charge rule and also to improve the naturalization process. So that's on the way also. They're gonna to try to, they wanna do what they can to take out the public charge rule. The only thing is that um, it's been hung up now in the courts and most likely the Biden administration will try to settle the lawsuits that are keeping this public charge rule in the courts and walk it back. So I think in the end, public charge rule is gonna be going out and that'll be a good sign for everybody else. And remember about the travel alert that if you're coming to the United States, you have to be tested no more than three days before your US bound flight and show a negative viral test result. So that's still in effect. And there may be even a little more coming in terms of quarantines. Uh, we've already talked about, oh, one more, one more interesting thing. We've been talking every week about uh, when they're going to resume deportation, removal proceedings. And the last thing we knew that were postponed till February 19, 2021. And so a lawyer sent me, sent me an email basically saying, what's going on? Does it look like they're now going to start to move removal proceedings forward now? on these non-detained cases that they might start being heard February 22nd and onward. So those people who have had removal proceedings and haven't had a date yet and they're non-detained, this gentleman who sent me an email basically says, it looks like maybe they'll be moving forward on removal cases because there's a tremendous amount of removal cases pending because of the Trump admin ex-president's administration. So this is good, uh, good news also. Um, and so we may have some movement on that. Um, we also talked about um, the new uh, citizenship question and answer civics test, which we don't like. And we had spoken more about the citizenship stuff in our webinar last week, but we'll, we'll talk more about it because I think it's very important, especially the immigrant community who can actually, you know, file for citizenship, do so and do so immediately. Yeah, anybody filing for naturalization after December 2, 2020, 2020, will be subject to this civics test, which is really designed by the previous administration to make it much harder for people to pass the civics test and to become U.S. citizens. So it's, uh, we're hoping that the, the Biden administration will reverse the costs on this test and change it. And they've already said that they're going to be having a review of naturalization. They want it to go quicker and smoother. So uh, in the meantime, if you, if people are listening to the program, like get in touch with us, we'll be happy to send you a copy of the old, old citizenship test and the new citizenship test. The new one has more questions and more complicated questions. And but we're hoping that uh, President Biden will scrap that and put into go back to the old citizenship test. So that's one of my favorite topics to talk about the, the citizenship test that the ex administration put in to try to discourage people from becoming citizens. And hopefully the Trump administration will go back to the old test. The new naturalization test, which was put in by the old administration, was designed to make it awkward and difficult to understand the test, and therefore people will have a harder time becoming citizens. So that's one of my favorite topics. We're going to watch this very closely, and we're hoping and expecting that the Biden administration will scrap the new civics test that put in by the ex administration, go back to the old civics test, would make it easier for people to pass and become U.S. citizens. Beautiful. Alan E.K. giving us some information and some uh, uh, some update right here on cruising with a case down there. Once again, folks, the show is brought to you by PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac and Masico. If you have immigration questions right now, you can place them right there on Facebook. You can call 844-774-3529 to book your consultations and get your questions answered by a competent, proficient attorney. 844-PPIDLAW. Before we jump into any questions, Andrea, do you have anything to say on any of what it is that Alan E.K. said? Do you have any updates of your own or anything that you'd like to touch on? Yes, 
Um, so also just um, letting people know to sign up for our newsletter. It's news at ppid.com. That's news at ppid.com. And we send yeah. weekly updates of everything that we talk about or all the new developments. So that's definitely helpful to keep up or to keep track. Um, regarding what Alan said, in terms of the public charge rule, yeah, we think it's going to be, um, you know, completely gone at some point. But as of right now, we still have to file Form I-944. Um, we are filing more of a skeletal form instead of including as many documents as USCIS is asking for, because we've been hearing from other practitioners that they're not sending back the packets. So that's good. But we still have to do the form. We still have to fill out the 18 pages. Um, so that's, that's still in place for now. Um, and what he said about the DREAM Act is great because there's a lot of things that have been happening with DACA. We've been hearing so much about providing a path to citizenship. So it, it does help put pressure on that. So I feel like DACA will be one of the things that passes and that will eventually become, um, give people a pathway to citizenship. But as of right now, USCIS is accepting first time requests for DACA, renewal requests and advanced parole requests. So that when you have a DACA, even though it's just a work permit, you can apply for an advanced parole travel outside the country and come back with a legal entry. So that's very helpful. Andrea, um, what happened, what, excuse me, what happened if you, know, you applied for DACA a couple of years ago and it got denied? So you need to reapply. Um, USCIS is accepting those applications. Even if it was denied, they probably denied it based on uh, the prior administra administration's changes. So you should reapply now. And we um, have been successful in some of those cases. Yes. That yeah. we didn't, then we refiled and they got approved. Yeah. For everyone out there that, that, that filed their DACA before, I think they actually need to give the firm a call to find out what their options are. So once again, folks, you, you've heard us express what DACA is. You heard Andrea on it. You heard Conrad and Alan E.K. on it. Hey, it doesn't hurt. Get a consultation. Find out where things are. What can happen? What can happen? Just call the firm, 844-774-3529. Finally, the Caribbean community have a solid full service law firm that you can reach out to and ask questions. Make sure you call PPID 844-774-3529. Um, let's jump into questions, all right, with the attorneys. And the first question up here says, it's been 110 days since I applied for my green card and work permit. I still haven't received any biometrics letter. Is that normal, Andrea? So if they received a receipt notice with all of the forms, then they should not be too worried um, because if they have the receipt, that's fine. But the biometrics could take some time now because of all the delays with COVID and stuff. But if they are really concerned, they can give us a call and we can do an inquiry for them to figure out what's happening. Okay, all right. And which brings about a question for Alan. Um, just to reiterate, I mean, are they seeing people now who have been detained by um, immigration in court? What was the question? I know about people who have been detained, but people who have been arrested, detained, are they finally seeing them in court now? Because I know there was an issue with the whole COVID thing. No, not yet. In other words, people who have been, been detained, um, those cases are probably going to start moving forward. And, and I, I gave you a date before it was the non-detained cases right. waiting and waiting and waiting. People who are detained will probably get a much quicker hearing. They're not going to keep, it could cost the government money to detain people. So those cases should start to move much faster. Gotcha. Just wanted to bring that up to date. All right. Once again, folks, you're in tune to Cruising with a Case Handler, a show brought to you by Paula Pollock, Isaac and Seco. That's PPID, the law firm, and we're speaking on immigration today. All right, here's a question. My spouse's IR1 visa was approved last week. We've been married for six years, and we will relocate to the United States in the next few weeks. How exactly is she going to receive our green card? Is that automatic after she enters the U.S.? Do we need to file another form? Conrad, what's an IR1? And if you can answer that one. 
IR1 is a U.S. citizen applying for a spouse, and the application is being processed overseas through the, or will be processed overseas through the U.S. consulate, uh, wherever these people are residing. Um, the approval of the I-130, that's a good step. That means the Immigration Service is satisfied as to the bona fides of the marriage. Next, the petition will be sent to the National Visa Center, NVC. NVC will then contact them. They have to pay some fees to the NVC. The NVC will process. That's when they need to submit proof of support that they're not going to become a public charge while they're here, um, and uh, uh, copies of the original documents, birth certificates, marriage certificates, all that kind of stuff. Um, and eventually, the National Visa Center will then send the application to whatever post the U.S. consul post they're in, uh, in what country they're in, and eventually they'll have an interview. At the interview, if the case is approved, the person will be granted an immigrant visa, and she then has 120 days to enter the United States, at, after which, when she arrives, or he arrives, the green card will mail to her. That's how it works. Now, at the airport, she won't get a green card. At the airport, they'll give you a stamp in the passport, which would be like a temporary green card, which you can use to travel until you get the green card in the mail. Exactly. That stamp allows her to travel, to work. It's a temporary green card, like Alan says. The green card then comes usually within a month or two after that. Okay. Um, speaking about stamps, I, I think one of you, I, either Alan or Andrea, mentioned something about stamp for people who are renewing their green cards. They don't have to. Yes. Yeah. What, um, what was that all about for people renewing so their green cards? That's a new change. Um, and it's supposed to take effect uh, in, starting January 2021. Basically, when people file to renew their green cards, um, you have to usually go for an info pass at immigration and get a stamp on your passport that says that your green card, you're still, it's still valid, it's just pending renewal. Right. Now they're saying, but that's a problem because having to make an appointment to go to immigration is a lot of work sometimes. So what they're doing is that all the I-90s or renewals that you file now, you, you should be getting a letter on the mail in that green paper saying that, uh, in, that you have status still or green card status and that letter should come within seven to ten days so you could use that letter to show that although your green card expired you're still you still hold valid status here's my question in, in reference to that people who have had a run-in with the law infractions with the law is it wise for them to actually go and renew their green card without consulting an attorney um, and getting their dispositions checked um, i mean could they get put in removal proceedings when they go to renew their, their green card? If you had a problem with the law, before you renew your green card, you probably should come and see us and talk to us because it may not be a good idea, or, or at least we want to give you some advice on whether it'll be dangerous or not. But I mean, if you have a, a criminal problem, you do want to renew your green card, but you need some advice on what to do and how to do it. Yeah. I thought so. And I, sometimes people think that they, because they have criminal problems, they can do a citizenship and they just need to keep renewing the green card, but that's not necessarily true. So definitely you should always have those dispositions checked by an attorney because you could still be eligible for citizenship. Even so basically anyone out there who have a green card and you have had a run with the law, you've been arrested or have infractions with the law, you should actually call the firm and speak with one of the attorneys here to find out how you could potentially go for your citizenship. And I say this because I know a lot of my people in the community, they refuse to go and file for their citizenship because when they were younger, they had run-ins with the law, okay? Whether well, it's shoplifting, jumping the turnstile, driving under the influence, driving while intoxicated. Maybe you had a, a, something that's even bigger. You paid your debt to society. What can be done? Stop listening to your mom and your pops and listen to the attorneys, okay? Call up the attorneys and say, you know what? Let me just find out what can be done, if anything can be done. And also another thing, Andrea and Conrad and Alan, people tend to listen to the streets. No, don't file for your citizenship. They're gonna lie to you. They're gonna lock you up. They're gonna put you in removal proceedings. They're gonna do all of this. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason why we got a 60 year old law firm here with such deep experience to advise you professionally, call and find out. Because guess what? You have a green card, you have a criminal infraction. What if you get another one? Sometimes things just happen to, bad things happen to good people. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time or vice versa. Call the firm, 
find out. I say go for your citizenship for multiple reasons. The number to call, once again, is 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPIBLAW. Call, get yourself a consultation, and find out about how you can go for your citizenship. Even if you have had an infraction, a run-in with the law, or been arrested. Make the call and find out. All right. In many cases, some of you are already a citizen. You don't even know. You can talk to the attorneys about that. I'm not the attorney. All right. Here's another question here. I am a freelance journalist with B1B2 visa. I am interested in traveling to the United States to do travel blogs on various sites across the U.S. It may be on the form of video blogs at time as such a photographer will accompany me. Can I travel on this category visa? For this or will I need to get another? Once again, before we get to the top of the hour, 844 PPID law is the number. Alan, you want to take that one? Yeah, if you're a journalist um, and you would no more normally have a journalist visa, this is a visa called an I visa, theoretically, but you may have a B1, B2. Basically, you want to bring proof when you come in of what you're coming to do, that you're not going to be getting paid from the United States. That you're, and show your journalist credentials from Jamaica, let's say, and what you're coming to do. Because the first person you see when you get to the airport has a minute or two to talk to you. If they have any problem at all, they send you the secondary inspection. Those people at Customs and Border Protection have loads of, loads of time. So you want to be prepared before you come in to show what you're coming to do and show your journalist credentials from back home and show show that you're not going to be getting paid from U.S. sources. So uh, you, this would be a good, you'd be, you should have a consultation with us before you come in. You know, typically to get an I visa, which is the visa that you want, uh, the journalist visa is an I visa, uh, you need some kind of company or agency behind you. You can't just say, you know, I woke up this morning, I decided to be a journalist, give me my I visa. You know, it doesn't work that way. You need to have some kind of organization behind you that they're sending you here or something along those lines. Um, I don't know if that's your circumstance, um, but ideally to get it to get an I visa, that, that's that's the way it works. Uh, and as Alan said, if you're coming on a tourist visa, B1 or B2, um, you can't be paid from the U.S. Yeah, you, you cannot be paid from a U.S. source. So you they probably the first thing they're going to ask you to, is how are you supporting yourself while you're here? Because the, they're going to be thinking that you're coming here to work. Uh, and that's what you want to show them that that is not the case. Okay. All right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, before we get to the top of the hour, I want to reiterate the phone number for the full service law firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac and Seco, PPID. Uh, the number once again is 844-774-3529. Call now, get those immigration consultations in ask your questions of an attorney don't go elsewhere and ask of other people consultants and else and otherwise make the call 844-774-3529 that's 844-PPIDLAW if you're listening on 93.5 FM feel free to switch over to the PPID page the case handler page or the David Squeeze Attitude page thank you so much 93.5 FM listeners let's continue on Facebook it's uh, 10 o'clock all right it's 10 o'clock. That's what it is. Got a couple more questions here. Uh, well, at least one more. Well, two more. One person on Facebook here directly wants to know, any update on the bands? No any update. New development on the bands, they said. Oh, no update at this point. Uh, right now, they are due to expire on March 31st this year. Uh, and what the bands were talking about, there is a ban in place since the Trump administration, since uh, he put them in place last April and in June. There's a ban on people applying for green cards. Most people applying for green cards. Um, the only exceptions really are uh, spouses of U.S. citizens and children under 21 of U.S. citizens. Everybody else is pretty much subject to the bans uh, with limited exceptions. Um, and temporary workers as well, uh, most non-immigrant visas, uh, H-1B, H-2B, J-1s, um, L-1s, they're subject to a travel ban. You cannot get that type of visa in the United States until after March 31st of this year. Um, whether or not Biden is going to end those bans, we don't know. My guess is, personally, I don't think he's going to do it because there are just too many political ramifications in doing so. 
I think rather he's just going to wait the month and a half and those ba those bans will expire on their own. Uh, in order for them to be extended, the, the, the administration would have to take affirmative steps to extend them, uh, as Trump did on December 31st. Biden's not going to do that, I don't think. Now, those bans mean that you're not going to get a visa. It doesn't mean you can't do all the paperwork and bring it up to the step, the last step where you have to go into the consul and get the visa. That has to be resolved. And the bans also only apply to people that are not in the United States with those visas. So if you're in the United States, uh, this, everything we just said really doesn't apply to you. You can, if, assuming you can apply here in the U.S. Um, and um, same thing, if you uh, if you already have a, 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 an H-1 visa, you can travel with that visa. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, final question here, attorneys. My wife and I filed for our adopted daughter's I-130 last February 2020. We finally accepted the paperwork with the priority of April 2020. At first, the application was sent to the National Benefits Center and then to Texas Service Center. Texas Service Center is processing applications from July 2020 and ours is still not processed. We have not received any correspondence from USCIS other than it is still under process. We have raised two service requests since December 2020, but no response. Can someone tell us what might be happening? Is this delay all across the board or just for some? Is there anything else we can do? Here's now, a perfect example of people doing the case on their own mm -hmm. that are stuck because of it. Uh, number one, we would need to know who's applying. Uh, the person is applying, the parent. Is he a resident? Is he a citizen? Um, number one, because that's going to make a difference in terms of how long the case takes. Uh, they said the case has been accepted for processing. Uh, I'm assuming it hasn't been approved. The fact that they bounced it from the NBC to the Texas Service Center, that's what they do. Um, and, and in terms of why it's taking as long as it is, I, I couldn't even begin to, to, get, to guess why that is. Uh, did you meet all the requirements? Have you adopted the children before they turn 16? Have you demonstrated two years residence, two years legal custody? Uh, it, it, look, you wanna do this on your own? You, I, I wish you a lot of luck. Uh, because even for lawyers, it's not an easy process. There are a lot of questions, a lot of information. There's a lot of pitfalls in a case like that. Um, so, I mean, that's really what I always say, reach out to the attorneys. Immigration is truly a minefield. So, people, reach out to the firm, all right? Once again, the number is 844-PPID-LAW. And, and before I go, I, I need for you, for you attorneys to answer this question. A lot of folks are sitting on a fence as to what's going on with the administration and the executive orders and what's going to change and the bans and what's not going to happen. For the people out there who may have options, is it wise for them to actually reach out to the firm and find out if they should get into the system and wait to see what happens? Or is it wise for them to just kick back, relax, and just wait for stuff to happen? I, I just need for you it's go ahead. Right to sit back and wait for things to happen. It's wise to come and see us and do a consultation. And also it's wise to stay away from travel agents and notarios and all these people who say, oh, there's going to be a new immigration law. Come to see us. We'll put you first online. Give us some money and you'll be first online. So it's, it's wise to stay away from those kind of people and it's wise to come and see us and not to sit back. Okay. Once again, folks, as we implore, my favorite word, like I always say, you to actually reach out to the firm, get a consultation. Even if you've got a consultation elsewhere, listen, you've got a reputable firm here. They've been on this radio station with me for over a year, and they have proven themselves, not only in the area of immigration, but also personal injury. Make the phone call, book that consult, speak with one of the attorneys, and get the real answers. Not some answer that people are giving you in the streets. Once again, reach out to them. The number is 844-PPIDLAW. That's 844-774-3529. You get hurt in an accident, you need immigration help, criminal defense, family law, and much more. A full service law firm, 844-PPIDLAW. With that said, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you, Andrea, for the cool glasses. And uh, have yourself an amazing Tuesday. Adam Handler, wherever the hell you are, thank you um, for not giving us Testimonial Tuesday, meaning that you should have been here to give it to us. We want that Testimonial Tuesday, but we'll talk soon.
Thank Actually, you. All Adam for... just texted me. He's doing testimonial Tuesday tomorrow on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, no problem. Anyway, thank you all so much. Ladies and gentlemen, for watching, remember to share this video on as many, many timelines.